Hey, what's up everyone? So today I saw a headline that talks about how there's a lawsuit going against Instagram for knowing that their programming and the way that their app works can actually further or lead to body image issues, mental health problems such as anxiety and depression. And so I wanted to jump into that and explore some of that today. Can Instagram worsen your mental health? Let's take a look. So I'm a licensed professional counselor and I do deal with parents who are talking with me pretty much every day, trying to figure out how they navigate parenting. They feel like their kids are addicted to social media or are on it all the time. I've definitely heard stories of college students, high school students who are deriving a lot of their sense of self-worth from how many likes or how much response they get on their social media, particularly Instagram, but other social media platforms do apply here as well. So let's dig into the top three reasons that Instagram might be affecting your mental health. So to explain some of my thought process, we need to dive into a little bit of cognitive behavioral therapy. And basically what this theory and what this therapy says is that we react to our circumstances based on our interpretations of those circumstances. So the way that we think and what we believe about what happens around us, not necessarily what actually happens, but what we believe happens around us is what determines how we feel about it and how we respond to it. And what happens is that social media is particularly adept and people are particularly susceptible to particular distortions of that reality and that interpretation. And those cognitive distortions are what they're called in cognitive behavioral therapy are what lead to symptoms and to disorders within the CBT framework. One of the first ones that's really easy to point out is this idea of mental filtering. We point out all the bad things that are happening to us and we don't pay attention to the good. In social media, that's actually reversed so that we see all the good things that are happening to people and we are still living with the reality that our lives are not as ideal as theirs looks. And so everybody knows that this goes on with social media. You curate what you post, you filter, you choose the best pictures and videos, and somehow we still think that what we see is reality based on what other people are posting. So all we see are the highlights of everybody's lives, their best vacations, their weddings, their graduations, parties, all of that stuff. We think people's lives are just made up of those good things while we're stuck with the reality of knowing there's crap happening in our lives, but we don't see that going on with other people. And so social media can definitely further that. We think, wow, everyone's having fun. Everyone is enjoying their lives. Everyone looks great, feels great. How come I don't feel that way? How come I don't look that way? How come I'm not that way all the time? And that can lead to feeling depressed or isolated for sure. A second piece that ties onto that is a mental filter of overgeneralizing. So we take very little information and we assume it's that way all the time. And so you see this on social media, you see a couple of posts where, again, like we said, they're picture perfect, right? Everything's filtered, everything's carefully curated, nothing slips between the cracks. And so we assume that person's life is always that way, always fun, always living the high life, always partying. And you can even see that in the setup right here. Like this looks like a very clean setup. If I swiveled this camera around, you see the mess of my daily life. We got dishes on the table here, dirty napkins, notes that I have in front of me, all of that stuff that you don't see because I can choose what you get to look at even though that's not the reality. And that's what's happening with social media and we tend to overgeneralize that. For example, with this video, you might think I'm a very organized, very neat person, but you're only seeing what I show you, and that's not the entire picture, but you extrapolate from what you see and what you're hearing. So both mental filtering and overgeneralizing lead us to assume that everyone's having more fun than we are. Everyone's enjoying their lives more than we are. Everyone is more popular than we are. That's a big one that I hear a lot. And then so we get to the social part of the social media too. The final filter that we'll talk about is mind reading. And mind reading is just what it sounds like. We start assuming that we know what people are thinking, why they do certain things, why they act certain ways. And that's already detrimental enough in person-to-person, face-to-face interactions when we assume that we know why somebody said something or why they made a face a certain way. And now we even have terminology within social media that adds to that phenomenon that you can read meaning into nothing at all, 
for instance, being left on red is one of the worst things that can happen to somebody, but we're actually interpreting that as a negative thing. We're saying that person chose to look at the message and chose not to respond because I'm not important enough when we don't know that that's the case. So even non-response can generate dislike for yourself or a feeling of being devalued because somebody didn't care enough to like or to comment or whatever it is on your post. So for all the messaging that social media is supposed to connect people, what I do see is that this gets us into our heads even more because we start thinking about every little piece because we know there is so much control in social media that we do control everything that we do on there that every little response or lack of response can feel intentional and personal. But we are just getting in our own heads and spinning stories about those things when that may not be the reality at all. So bottom line is, I don't know if social media causes mental health problems. I know that a lot of the problems that my clients have had are most often not helped by being on social media all the time. I think it's a powerful tool that can be used well but the way that it is being used right now does not accomplish the positive purpose that we can see for it. All of the comparison and assumption and generalizing based off of curated content really leads to feelings of isolation and depression and really feeling like you're the only person who's going through whatever struggle you're experiencing. Everyone, thank you so much for checking out this video. Please consider subscribing to follow and see more content about mental health as we explore this space about social media and about other aspects that affect mental health and people's journey to seek mental health care and be able to better advocate for themselves. Really appreciate you tuning in. See you next time.